Cool. That's a good harvest. Yeah. And like these guys will be this size in about a week. Yeah. yeah. Don't just go out in the woods and try and pick mushrooms. Yeah. That is a terrible idea. You have to know what you're doing, otherwise it can cost you your life. Nice catch, dude. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Let's see. Oh. <gasps> that is a gorgeous cluster of oyster mushrooms. You and me an oyster mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> We're out here looking for oyster mushrooms, which are these guys right here. Now, the cool thing about oyster mushrooms are they're edible, one, they're delicious, and they, uh, grow seasonally usually in the winter time when it gets wet enough outside and they start latching on to certain types of trees. As you can see on these, they're kind of drying out, some of them, but these are still good. And these will probably go this way in a couple of days if there's no more rain. You gotta make sure there's no bugs or any kind of infestation inside the actual mushroom, but from there um, you can cook them and eat them. They look pretty good. That looks pretty good. Yeah. What if we cut off the stipe there, the stem? The stem here. Oh, before we do. <clears throat> okay, so to ID these, do not take this video as uh, an instructional, but we're going to give you the basics here. You need to go out with professional mycologists or a mycological society. You definitely need the book All That the Rain Promises and More by David Aurora, as well as Mushrooms Demystified by David Aurora. They are absolutely worth a thousand times their weight in gold as far as keying these things out but if you don't understand the attributes that you're using to key out particular mushrooms you're likely going to misidentify them and you could get a poisonous one which will either make you poop your brains out or could even kill you so please don't take this video as an instructional but here's a few features as Martin said oyster mushrooms like to grow on wood specifically they'll grow on oaks willows and cottonwoods Though they may grow on other species as well. If they grow on eucalyptus, avoid them because they can give you stomach upsets because of something that's in the wood. I'm not sure exactly what. They always grow in these atypical uh, arrangements where the stem or stipe is off to one side instead of a perfect cap with a stem in the middle. Every once in a while you'll get one like that, but in the beginning, just don't pick those. Just take the ones with these atypical caps. They have true gills. These are like paper-like very close together and these gills will go all the way down onto the stem. The stem and cap is one piece. It's never a separate piece. You never have a stem and then a cap. It's all one piece. That's my rant. So they'll get infested with little beetles occasionally and luckily this one looks pretty good but there are a handful of these guys in there. So you get rid of these obviously but they'll, they'll actually burrow into the mushroom and eat them basically and check oh. and they are burrowing through here see those holes on both of these and I'm thinking that they're probably going all the way in yep what we can do is we can cut off cut off heart here and then see if see if the rest of it still has bugs sometimes they just have barely made their way in you can cut off the buggy part and the rest is good and there you can see you got right one little beetle there. What about this one? Is that a pinhole there? There's one right there. Yeah. Looks that pretty looks good. good. So where's that? This one looks pretty good. That's not a pinhole. Let's cut that little part right there. I bet you that the rest of it's going to be good. That looks good yeah. to me. Yeah. So the rest that of it is good. good. Salvageable. This looks pretty good. Yep, clean. 
that's clean. That looks good to me. Oh yeah. It's not a bad haul. Another mushroom that grows in a shelf-like arrangement with atypical caps and caps and stems that are combined. Very similar to oyster mushrooms, but it's orange. It's called a jack-o'-lantern. It glows in the dark, it's super cool, uh, but it's also poisonous. It won't kill you, but it will make you lose your lunch. So Really he, badly. Really badly. <laughs> yeah, mushrooms will mess you up pretty good if you get the wrong ones, so very careful. A lot of the world, not all of it, but a lot of like America and parts of Europe, uh, people have kind of started not eating mushrooms and it's coming back again, but part of that is because of all these scary stories that people have around mushrooms. But if you do it correctly with the right people and you learn how to actually identify them correctly, um, they're ex it's excellent. But yeah, definitely go with a professional. Don't eat mushrooms that you don't know because you could go very poorly. What are you getting water for, Kevin? Because we ain't got no rain. We've been in a drought for 15 years now and uh, it looks like so far this winter we had a bunch of rain early and now we have had none it's been almost a month with no rain whatsoever so we're filling up uh, from the creek here we're gonna go water those trees and hopefully the mycelium will keep producing and we can keep coming back for mushrooms uh, if you try something like this or if you get a mushroom kit for Christmas and you want to water your oysters you got to use creek water or rain water if you use city water it has chlorine in it and it might kill your mycelium Look at how beautiful this canyon is. It really is. Bunch of little babies here. You can see these little oysters here. And there. Right here. Oh yeah, back it up. Some more right here. So we're gonna water this wood. Hey! Yeah, come on. We don't know if this is gonna work, but it might just give them just enough moisture to keep going. We might get one more crop before the end of the rains. Okay, so here we have black trumpets and some hedgehog mushrooms that we gathered in the forest. You can see how dark that broth is. These we gathered last year and we've just rehydrated them. And they're good. You know, you dry them in a dehydrator and you can serve them up, you know, a year later. I'm gonna make pasta with chopsticks if this is the last thing I do. Our neighbor Luke just kicked down some venison from a little forky he got. Got our homemade herb salt made from the seawater we cooked down. My brother's spice kit. I added some of these. These are um, fennel seeds that Diane and I gathered earlier in the season. All right, so we diced up the mushrooms that we gathered. These uh, were black trumpets and hedgehogs. Toss those in with the venison sausage, and now we are mixing in ricotta for our ravioli filling. Ravioli's for giants? <laughs> I am a giant. Alright, so we've got our homemade ravioli. It's got uh, foraged black trumpets and hedgehog mushrooms. It's got some venison from our, our neighbor Luke. And uh, some homemade sea salt. Foraged fennel seeds. All kinds of goodies in here. And let's give it a taste test. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Oh, I might need another bowl, baby. Yeah, the ricotta with the venison sausage, it's like, it's perfect. We're definitely doing this again. We should try and do a quick clip when it's all done for Instagram too. You got what I'm saying? 
in my life. All right, so we uh, we just found a, a shrimp mushroom. It's a little bit past prime. There's some bug holes in it and stuff, so we're not gonna keep it. But um, one of the distincting, di distinctive features is it's got this like real pink blushing, and the other one is it, it has a distinct smell. So, uh, what do you think, man? Well, hold on, let me see. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I think it's a shrimp mushroom. <laughs>